welcome back, it's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw kudu. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, here's the kudu already sketched out, so um, we're just going to get started. Right, it's got some dark by the nose, dark on the forehead, and then like a lighter tan, and then white. Um, but we're going to start here by the nose, as always. It's you know, one line um, in between the others. We build it up. Typically we'll aim for the uh, corner of the eyes. Same is true in this case. Even though our color can't make it all the way over there, we want to set the groundwork for that. Um, because the hair fur pattern, you know, we'll just need to continue it with different colors. Oh, and there's a white strip. This is a white strip on their faces. They're an antelope. Nice big, interesting antlers. Right, so just working this up, coming around the side, being mindful that as we come off the nose, hair is probably turning. Right, so we're adjusting for that. Hair is probably turning. And then as it comes down, there's a little bit of blending. That's going to be happening between the tan and the dark here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it all the way out on the bottom. Um, just deciding what to do on this side too. I guess I can. And then we'll, you know, kind of blend it as it as it comes down and off. Okay, and then we're continuing that up here, that dark, and then just sort of angling the fur off, you know, right up the middle. We'll bring it straight up, but off to the sides, we start angling it off to the sides. And we'll have a little bit of a loop over the eye, more so in um, the other colors. And then, of course, we have the big ears as well. We're going to have um, dark coming down, maybe about here on the ears. Right, so the, the top section being the dark. And then same thing on this side, right? Bring it over. A little bit of up and over by the eye. Pretty straightforward. A lot of this composition is taken up with the antlers. Which um, sometimes I avoid drawing animals with antlers because it antlers add a ton of time to a composition. It's weird as that seems. They really do. Same thing over here, right? There's a little bit of a dip with the coming down. And then the ear is going to be dark on the top before it turns to that lighter tan underneath. Um, all right. And then I probably need to pull this down to the actual white. Okay. Now we'll go with that tan, which the color difference isn't significant, so it may not stand out all that much, but here we go anyway. Right, so underneath we're going to loop this so it's coming down and off the eye here. And kind of blends in with what we've already done. And then some white off the side of the face. Same thing over here, right? Pull this over to the eye. This would go up and over. This would all come underneath. So looping that down until we run into the white. Okay. All oh, right, and then uh, 
underneath, right down in here. I don't think this is white. I think this is like the tan. And then there's white on the fluff of the ears, kind of like pink uh, on the inside. Nice and quick. All right. And then we'll get the white. So we're still following this in the same pattern. All right. Just matching up to what we've already drawn, which is why it's important to get all the others, even though, you know, that isn't heading in that direction, it's still important to get that going. You don't want it to be a drying transition from one color to the other. I mean, it would happen. You would have kind of a, a little bit of a jar maybe, but it shouldn't be like the change of a direction. It's the change of the color itself, right? So then you have off to the side, you have the white coming down to the edge of the face on both sides. And then white down here. On uh, the cheeks and the chin. With a little bit of a black strip coming off the nose in between. We have some. Um, We have some hair that comes down too. It's not a lot. It's kind of on their throats more than anything. So just a little bit. Okay. And then the fluff out of their ears is white. Both sides. Kind of coming out of this little space here. Okay. Now to revisit the ears, and I go back with that dark and just sort of do a small amount of coming around. Nothing big yet, just enough to indicate they're there. And there's going to be obviously some fur that bleeds into some pink happening all the way around on both sides. All right, so just pulling this up, coming up the middle, changing my line direction there swooping up the other way or swooping down the other way whatever you you get it and then all the way down so if we pop off that sketch layer that's what we have so far okay now I was gonna do the um, horns darker but I like a, a darker brown, this dark color here, but I think I'm going to leave it the same color as the fur color. I feel like that's a little bit more accurate. So we're just going to follow the edge of the horns as best we can. Just long strokes. This doesn't matter as much. We could add texture if we wanted to. There is texture, especially when you look at them at the bottom of their horns. There's this like rigid texture happening. Um, I don't think we need to. We'll see how it goes once we start adding shadows and highlights. What we do need to keep in mind, though, is the way the horns are twisting around. Right, there's some manner of um, horns twisting and rounding a curve here to this sharper 
or turned down because it's folded into itself from our angle. Right, so this is running right into that. So there would be a potentially a sharper hook. Our line direction can matter here. So just sort of keeping that in mind. There's also a ridge. That's why I drew this line in. There is a ridge on their horns. Um, something to kind of keep in mind. Now, you know, when you're dealing with a design like this, I do have to be mindful. A lot of people don't want to wear a you know, a drawing on their stomachs on a shirt, right? So it's another reason I don't typically draw animals with horns is it pushes the animal down. I'm a, I've done it a lot though. Sometimes they sell. So I just need to sort of be mindful that, um, uh, I tried to, to widen his horns out instead of make them nice and tall. I mean, they're nice and tall, but make them wider instead of taller. So I have room to push him up and then I can make him smaller. He'd need to go smaller anyway. He's too close to the edge for a good for a good shirt. But you know, as you're designing, those are also things to think about is how would this look on a finished product if I'm designing here for a shirt? Well I need to consider the fact that, you know, he's he's got tall antlers. And so antlers horns, I'm not really sure. I guess antlers. He's an antelope. Um, so bearing that in mind, you know, maybe it's a great design, but if it if it puts a weird placement on the shirt, you've got to you've got to navigate that. That's sort of another extra step in thinking about how to do this, right? Just like the other one, this kind of comes to an end here before it turns its looping up. Line direction will, once again, it will be noticeable. Sketching the horns is easy. Um, it's once we add shadows and highlights, it gets a little harder. Partly because they're horns, so they need their lines need to be a bit cleaner than like fur, which is, you know, fine, but not ideal. <laughs> so that's what we got. It's a good start so far. All right. Um. So now we're gonna get started with the. Um, oh, it's already. Highlights and shadows. I'm going to have the light source coming from above and to the right. As always, that means above and in front of, um, not behind or next to. So, right, in a lot of spaces, it's going to be full pin pressure. See how that really builds up. But all edges will be in shadow, and especially on this back side, right, this will be in shadow. Although I'm going to extend the white up a little bit too. Right, so I'm going to make right under the eye and highlight, but for now, we'll do it in shadow. Um, all over here, some of this is actually the other color. I'm doing this all in dark, but some of this is not that. So this is just light pin pressure, right? You can see the difference. And then, you know, over here, right, same thing, all edges in shadow, so even though this is the side of the light source, <laughs> aye, aye, aye. so that's 
And that's the white. And then up here. Not only do you have the edge, but you have the, the horn that's blocking that. The horn antler. Whatever that is. And then up in here on the ear for that edge and well potentially be having some some amount of ear itself blocking and then over here right we have where the face dips down so that would be in shadow because there's that little there's that dip before it gets to um, the ear as it's as it's going over which means down on the ear where that's happening would also be in shadow plus you have the antler potentially casting a little bit just a little so that's in shadow it's not a lot for that color although gonna go in and fix where I was overzealous this is the wrong color <laughs> Okay. Sometimes when the colors are too close together, you know, it happens. Okay. Now, some of this is going to be highlight, and I'm just filling that in, and then the rest of this will be highlight. Right, so I'm just following the lines that, that I've already drawn. Where I've already added shadow, I'm not going to be putting more pin pressure, I'm just going to be putting more lines. And see, it does the same thing. It just means I have to add a, a, a lot of extra lines. The reason for that is um, full pin pressure makes the line thicker, and it doesn't blend as nicely. As, as, nicely? as, as nicely. So by adding more lines, I get the same effect without the blending problem. And I mean, more lines, right? You can really, really brighten this up. And I'm not putting more pin pressure. Again, I am just adding more lines, right? And so then once we clear that, I can put full pin pressure again and all is well. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in um, all of that slightly darker brown. Uh, and I'll be right back. Now, I'm actually going to jump to the white. Because um, this section over here is bugging me a little bit. So, again, backside, um, light pin pressure. I'm gonna just pull that down. I feel like there was a weird, I created a weird edge in how I'd drawn his face there. All edges in shadow. So I did prep that with this other color on areas where it got close enough. And then I need to figure out where the white is. Can you? Sometimes the colors are way too close. I'm going to bring it up probably a little bit. All right, and, but then I can also blend some of the brighter white. You know, that is white, so, okay. Now, we have over the eye, down where the eye would come under, that's going to transition back into shadow right same on this side we have the eye but on the back side and where it's transitioning down would stay in shadow and then we're gonna have a little bit of that white trailing down before it's kicking into that full pin pressure here and all uh all kudus, uh, most kudus, have this white strip by their eyes, so, you know, it's just a matter of um, drawing a white 
sort of stripe across. They, some of them have different ones, different shapes, but it's roughly the same idea. Right, and then um, the white down in here, right bottom, again, where the mouth is, that's going to be in shadow. Same on the other side, it's going to be in shadow. And then the chin, uh, I'm going to draw up first the whole chin in shadow. It won't stay that way. It's, you know, just easier to sometimes draw it out that way because there's not a lot of space. So we're going to be adding some highlights to this in just a second. As soon as I get all the shadows in. Okay. So, right. This is highlight clearly. So that's again not adding more pin pressure, just adding more lines because I'm trying to blend it with already existing shadows. Kind of the same thing over here. Nose won't really be blocking. So we'll add highlight on that right side. And I already anticipated that. Um, that's why the um, highlight for that is also down. All right, and then for the chin, same thing. Weighted on the right side over through the middle and then we'll start backing that off and let it like taper out but making sure you know nice and bright um I'm actually gonna do a different layer for the chin fluff in case I change my mind on it so these are nice long strokes but um, kind of under a bit including it because they seem to have it right it's just sort of I think it's part of the neck technically so I probably could go with not drawing it but here we are if I decide it doesn't look good I can ditch it too there'd be some shadowing because the chin would be casting a shadow underneath I am going to go ahead and get this ear fluff. There's not much ear fluff for them. Um, unlike other animals where it's dominating the ear. doesn't seem like it does with them. So we're going to go ahead and draw it in. just kind of pops out of the ear. Again, with ear fluff, and theirs seems a little bit stringier, but you can be... A little bit looser with ear fluff because it's just sort of long typically long looser hair you just want to make sure that whatever you do doesn't dominate um, the animal like I don't want the hair the ear fluff hair and the whiteness of it it's pretty common that you see white and ear fluff on animals and kudos certainly have the white but you don't want that to overpower the rest of the composition so I'm gonna do it all in shadow first it's basically what I'm doing that's why this is all backed off and then we'll be adding just a little bit of highlight so I usually don't do it in this order but that's fine I already have the white I might as well okay so then a little bit of highlighting right at the tips here on both sides and then for this one not so much as the tips as kind of in the middle because it's going into the ear on one side and turning away from light source on the other tips though on the bottom it's fine okay all right we're doing pretty good now for this lighter color and then we'll get um 
at some point we'll need to get the horn. I mean, the, yeah, the, well, the horns, the nose. All right. So lighter color, not much to it, right? Same idea though, edge, shadow. Bottom where we have the ear coming under, obviously also shadow. Connecting that up. We kind of have a little bit of an edge where the ear is running into the eye. Although there is some amount of, yeah. There's um, some amount of uh, shadowing that needs to happen for the um, like the eyelash, I guess. It would be called same thing on this side. I have that edge that would come down. Some of this would be highlight, but for now, I'm going to get this back edge and give myself a nice big runway to work with. Even though the eye is turned away, I often will um, add highlight under an eye and then work this in to being highlight. You should be able to tell a color difference. Again, more lines, not more pin pressure until we connect it in where there's just that little bit of a transition. And then to blend it more, I can just push this color deeper, right? I can push this into, that'll blend it better. It's much further down on one side than the other, so I'm gonna match that. And then we have right, all of this. under the ear. I'm gonna fix this line too. Kind of fix it real fast. Normally I don't do that, but I don't want to forget. I, I did something wonky with the way I did this. And I just want to make sure it's all lined up right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and once again, I can I can get rid of that, I guess. I forgot all about uh, the eyelash. <laughs> you know, once again, the backside, right? Light pin pressure. And it's fully on the backside, so back here would be all light pin pressure. And I'm just going to deal with the fact that I'm going to sort out the eyelash later. Okay. Yes, it's looking good. Now, before we get into um, Santlers, I'm gonna go ahead and do the nose. So I'm gonna choose a gray since it's black. And we're gonna just draw down, right? They have nostrils here. Just kind of drawing it down. Light pin pressure, of course, bringing it down here too. 
and then we'll add a little bit of highlighting. Add more lines, not more pin pressure. Across the top and over. Going into shadow underneath and then down here underneath catching that highlight. It's kind of going right into recess of the nostrils. Bring it over. I'm going to taper this off as it comes over, but it still needs a little bit more than it has now. Underneath. Yeah. And then down here. Um, we can also go ahead and add in a little bit of the eyebrow. Let's see how that translates to the fact that I've already drawn over top of it. Okay. Where I drew over top. I think that's fully it. This seems to be my best bet. Okay. So I'm only going to take just a little bit and erase it a little bit and erase it. Work better on one side than the other. I can't figure out why. Um, probably because I'm on the wrong section. That's fine. You can kind of see it. Um, now, the other thing I need to do that I didn't do a very good job of is cleaning up right by the eye. Right? Like you can see, there's a lot of space where the eye should be and where I drew it. So. Just going to fix that. On both sides if I need to. I don't need to as much. Do a better job on this side than I did on the other. Okay. There we go. You want the eye to be a nice clean like line. I'm going to add a little bit of light under the eye as well. Wouldn't be accurate, but um, we look at eyes first, so it's good to kind of have it. Okay, now for the antlers. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do both of them in com completely in shadow. It'll be a lot easier to add in the highlights. Um, right, so that's that light pin pressure. I'm going to clean up the lines as I do it. So any weird like jagged line, right, like I have this kind of sticking out. So either I'll, I'll tuck it in and get rid of it or I'll, I'll push the lines to line them up better like that. Um, so just that light pin pressure, I'm going to do that for both antlers, and I will be right back.
So the reason I did that is it's horns are, or antlers, either, both. They are notoriously frustrating um, to draw. So it's easier to get the shadows in, right? All edges are, are in shadow, so now I don't have to draw to the edge. Um, and the, the basic shape, like this will just help, because I can add more lines, not more pin pressure, to sort of fill it in, right? So light source coming from above and to the right, and there's a ridge here um, on their antlers. So the, the ridge itself will have some highlighting. We'll be changing the direction of the highlight as it goes because the antlers are shifting and changing too. I'm actually going to do the same thing over here so that I can get the ridge in and the sketch off. Okay, all the way up into here would be highlighting. Some of this would be a little bit more central than one side or another. You kind of have the ridge, it dips under, so you'd have some more shadowing underneath and more highlighting over top, being sure to blend it in. And then it comes back down and that highlighting is once again going to weight towards the right instead of the left as it comes down into that final little bit. And of course, um, tip here is also going to have highlighting coming down. Coming down and rounding into the antler as it's down here. Just like down here, it's going to come down, right, highlighting down here and round into the antler. And then it has this weird ridge underneath. All right, so highlighting more on top. Oh, minus that weird random line that I just put in there. And then underneath, right, because you have that angle, but as we bring it down, we're going to shift that highlighting line more towards the right, or center, really. Following the same line, so all I'm doing is shifting where I'm adding the extra lines to be more towards the right, and or center, instead of on top. And then just making sure that it's nice and blended and bright. Um, there's no doubt that there's a highlight here, so don't be afraid to add in. Right now it really is clear there's a ridge there. Up top, it's not quite there yet, so we can undo some of that extreme. And then it really kind of kicks in under, right through here. So we want that ridge to really be prominent, which we can do by just highlighting that, that light there. And then we can add more if we need more. Or not, if we don't. Adding more lines will always brighten it up, so easy enough to do. This transition, this turn, is hard for my hand to draw cleanly. Huh? That's why it, it looks so rough. So making sure that's also bright. All right, and then something over here. So in both cases, that ridge edge, clear to see. No need for the jagged lines, I think we're good. Yeah, so 
theory, all we have left are the ears uh, and the eyes. Eyes are pretty straightforward. So we're going to go with the um, ears real fast. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do with those is actually take the brown. Ooh, sorry, my voice just kind of skipped a beat. The brown and do light pin pressure all the way around. So basically, um, look in their ears, you can kind of see pink. So I'll be adding pink in the middle, but I'm going to push the brown to, the, to that edge where I'm going to add the pink in. And then the rest of the ear will be a pinkish color instead. I kind of sketched that in. Right, that's what all of that is. But light pin pressure, you know, no need to do big heavy pin pressure here. So I'm going to do this on both ears and I will be right back. Just gonna kind of choose a a dark pinkish kind of color. I can desaturate it as well so it's not too overwhelming. And then fill in the rest of the ear with that. Again, light pin pressure. I'm not gonna put a ton of pressure here. What I think is happening is either their ears are so big we can see the light coming through it, which will make it appear a little pink. Or the fur tapers off, it could be both, um, which again makes it appear a little pink. <laughs> so um, it could be both, could be a combination of both. Um, I don't think I'd have to do this. I think it would work with just filling the whole inner ear with this light brown. But I think it'd be interesting to add a little bit of a different color to it as well. So. Yeah, that goes. And then I'm going to taper it off. I've used this trick many a time. Right as we get to the middle, allowing the lines to lessen and the darkness of the ear to be what drives the rest of that in. Same thing over here. Right, so you'll pull that light pin pressure all the way over at the top because it's going in down here so this is where the gap would be. So all of this would be light pin pressure. Bring this all the way down. Could stand to be bright over here because it's got a, this is the side of the light source good because it's also an awkward angle for my hand. Not quite drawing as nicely. I wish that I'd felt better. Right, bringing that in. Want this to be brighter than the left. So at the very least we will need to pull this in a bit for that effect. And then lessening off the lines and allowing black to take hold. All right. And if I wanted to add any extra, right, I could add a little bit. Could add just a little bit here. Make it a little brighter. If I wanted to, same thing over here. Could add just a little bit. All I'm doing is adding a few more lines. I'm not putting a ton of pin pressure just to brighten it up. Not much. You notice I'm staying away from that dark edge though because I'm just brightening up the ear. You can see that effect. All right. Now for the eyes, I'm just going to do the uh, lasso tool um, and I'm going to draw a little teardrop, teardrop shape on both sides kind of uh, above and to the right, we can adjust as needed, and then we're going to fill it 
with the foreground color, which I've already changed to white. Um, left side's a little smaller, which is fine because it's on you know the shadowed side. Then I'm going to take the lasso tool again, and I'm going to come in here and do a bunch of jagged lines like fur. I'm going to erase that out and maybe make it better than what I just did. <laughs> Right, you can have it going in different directions. Make it more realistic for fur and cut into it as much as you need. Do a couple layers, it's all fine. Still looking a little too static. Do it until it looks good. Yeah, there we go. Now the last thing I am going to do, because I feel like this eye is missing some uh, coloration here, right at the edge, a big light gap. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. All right, there is a kudu. All right, so that's how you draw a kudu. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.